Okay friends, welcome to this second day, um, the second session. Yesterday we were uh, here and uh, we learned a lot about uh, the modernization on the city side, that is terminal building and the beyond. Today I will talk something about the inside of the terminal building, that is on the air side. Uh, yesterday I think nobody talked about what happens beyond your terminal building towards the air side. Safety is an important aspect. We take decisions on safety every day. When we are traveling, when we are, uh, say, riding on the escalator, we are taking a lift, we are taking a cab. We take safety decisions every time. Sometimes, uh, say, thinking about it, sometimes we do not think. It's an automatic, natural reaction. Today, I will talk about the safety flow within airport and how the decisions are taken to give you the safe experience of flight, safe experience of transiting from one place to the other. The discussion may be a little longer but uh, you will enjoy it as uh, normally it is not being touched in normal conferences and seminars. So patiently listen it and whenever you have a question, raise your hands. I will be happy to answer your queries anytime and every time. Thank you very much. Now, we will discuss flow of information, safety reporting, safety data, data analysis, and the last is decision making. The flow of safety information is related with the safety information flow in aviation parameter. Like how the information flows from a global aviation perspective to a local airport operation and vice versa. So starting our discussion with flow of information. So everybody is able to see this. This is like the entire aviation network starting from uh, ICAO, that is International Civil Aviation Organization as a uh, United Nations Agency for Civil Aviation and then uh, ICAO strategic objectives, then ICAO's business plan and in business plan you can see it is global aviation security plan, global aviation safety plan and global aviation navigation plan. These three plans are there and global aviation safety plan then we come to our region, that is Asia Pacific. And after the Asia Pacific, you have National Aviation Safety Plan, as in India. And the National Aviation Safety Plan is basically the responsibility of your regulator, that is the Great General of Civil Aviation. And it is then it is prepared State Safety Plan. And then finally, it comes to the operator, that is airport operator or air traffic service provider or maintenance party or airlines, there are uh, seven, eight organizations who has to implement this through their safety management system. Now coming to safety management system, safety management system is how the safety is managed in a scientific and categorically designed way. There is one NX, NX19 and one document 9859 by Cow, which explains it very clearly. This is the same global aviation navigation plan and then safety plan, regional aviation safety plan and national aviation safety plan. Now, how the information of the regional state is related? Global aviation safety plan is doc 10004, 23 to 25. Then regional aviation safety plan. 23 to 25 is under draft. It has not been finalized yet. Then India State Safety Plan. DGC has released very recently after gap of around 10 years. Then service provider SMS. Service provider SMS, whosoever is providing aviation service, they have to provide it through a logical and categorized document, which is safety management system. Now, Global Aviation Safety Plan, safety priorities. 
the ICAO addresses every year or every two years what are the global safety priorities. Likewise, in 2017-19, they have given the name Global Safety Priority. 2022, they have renamed it as High Risk Category Occurrences, that is HRCS. Now, HRCS, if they specify HRCS, state will also specify some HRCS, then it was a confusion. That which one is a state HRCS and which one is global or regional. Then they revised it in 2023-25 by saying that if it is global, we will rename it as GHRCS. Is that clear? Now, Global Emission Safety Plan, very briefly, to achieve a continuous reduction of operational safety risk, calls for all states to strengthen their safety oversight capabilities, implementation of effective state safety plans, states to increase collaboration at regional level, expand the use of industry programs, and need to ensure the appropriate infrastructure support to support safe operation. It may be manpower, it may be equipment, it may be say data structure, whatever. Now, uh, ICAO has a specified five high risk categories. I think uh, those who are uh, active at the airport or operation site, they must be knowing it. Otherwise, it is self explanatory. Controlled flight into terrain, mid air collision, runway excursion, runway incursion, and loss of control in flight. These are high risk categories that has to be monitored by every operator, whosoever is operating at the airport. Now coming to the sec second point, the safety reporting. Recognize significance of safety reporting system as the part of third component of SMS framework. I will not go to the, into the detail of component of the SMS framework. So it is third component, there are four components into it. Establish a relationship between safety assurance and reporting. ICAO identifies requirement on safety reporting system. There is a very, very defined and catalog coding system of safety reporting, safety data collection. Identify DGCA requirement on safety reporting system. This is in addition to what ICAO requires because uh, depending on state uh, responsibility or state identification of uh, risk or hazards, your regulator like DGCA may specify something additional to ICAO. Now, able to identify the difference between data and information. This is a typical day-to-day -day discussion. Many times we find that uh, once we have communicated the information, we have communicated the data. But there is a huge difference between data and information. From information, you can collect the data points. From data points, you have to restructure the information available. And uh, yesterday also and today, many people talked about uh, data-driven decision making. ICAO calls it D3M, data driven decision making and they make it sure that from November <coughs> 2019 every organization has to put forward its plan for data driven decision making. This I was talking about that is the third component safety assurance where data is gathered and safety information is reported. Safety reporting is three uh, different categorization, mandatory, voluntary and confidential. Everybody is uh, uh, say more or less aware about these type of data reporting. I'll not go into details of it. Now, the, uh, ICAO has a very different uh, requirement that every state regulator or every state should establish the SDCPS, Safety Data Collection and Processing System. It is like your, uh, like uh, yesterday everybody was uh, uh, saying that we have to have one source of data where from event based data collection you do and make your decision. It is in a similar way, you collect uh, safety data from varied resources like safety reporting, auditing and many other things where the safety data is generated. Once safety data is collected, you process as per your requirement that what uh, enhancement you want in safety, what is your priority, all those things. So safety data collection and processing system is it's basically state's responsibility and the state has given it a, uh, 
responsible this responsibility partially to operators airport operators air traffic service providers airlines that specifically in their domain they have to collect their data and process it and put records to the dgca website or dgca data sources wherever it is required this is the same thing as the cps modules reporting forms risk management audit management corrective action and mitigations training management reporting and data export since uh, aviation is a global phenomenon if i have some data and say australia has some data the reporting format should be such that this data can be exchanged that is why icao has come up with a definite format of data format of exchange so that global reporting and global data exchange is possible and information can be presented in the right manner and global decisions can be made on the priorities of uh, data now safety objectives there is a famous saying that you cannot manage the thing which you cannot monitor which you cannot measure until unless you are able to measure the things you cannot manage and in, in every day scenario it is very true if we are able to measure our speed at the speedometer we are able to control it if there is no speedometer you will never know how much how, how much speed you are having within your <coughs> sitting environment in a car so you may be 80 km per hour 100 km 120 you don't know so to manage it you must measure it that is the very very basic principle of anything which you wish to manage similarly safety objectives that is corporate and station level corporate safety objective i have given an example that maintain the environment around the aerodrome to keep it free from any birds and wildlife that may cause damage to the aircraft this may be a very vague uh, objective because it is a corporate level then you come to the station level that is at a particular airport it says that maintain the grass and shrub within operational area limit the number of butcheries around the airport and limit the number of garbage dumps very true uh, that airport can specify it but when it comes to the operational side operational unit operational unit objective what it will have grass in operational area shall not be more than 6 inches tall so it is a measurable objective you are able to measure that whenever it is going beyond 6 inches you have to cut it similarly garbage dumps in the vicinity of airport shall be covered now you have decided what objective you have how you will measure it that is where the indicator comes you have to specify certain indicators like speedometer you have an indicator.